that was like a good good bridge for me into this world of like yes you have felt like you weren't enough in all these little ways but there's also a lot of little ways in which you can find out that you are enough and you have agency in saying yes and no when you need to Morgan Harper Nichols, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Morgan is, I don't even know where to start with this list. I'm going to, an artist, an illustrator, a graphic designer, a poet. You are a mother on top of it all. You're a podcast host. You're an author. You're just, you truly do it all. Like people say that, but you really (laughs) do. And your work has been shared and reposted. If you haven't seen her work, you probably just didn't know it was her because it's everywhere. She has <laughs> over like almost 2 million followers on Instagram and more across social channels and has collaborated with major brands, including like Target, Anthropology. That one was so cool. Oh, Barnes and Noble. You. I mean, Starbucks, Hallmark, you name it. You are wildly accomplished and we're so excited to be able to chat with you today. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm I'm super honored and I I'm still surprised by my own story and things that I've done. I'm like, wow, I did do that. Okay. <laughs> like it's yeah, it's uh I'm I'm very grateful. I, I will say that and, and I really enjoy spending a lot of time just thinking about ways of making things that can create connection with others yeah. and, and also myself because like I need it too like that's something I say all the time I'm like everything you see me making comes from me just being in my own life at home a lot of times a lot of a lot of my life is at home just finding joy and peace in the small things in my own life and I, I enjoy being able to share that with others that's so beautiful well you share it very well and a lot of people share the sentiments that you put out there. I don't know how somehow you just find these quotes and these words and they hit every single time. It's like magical. (laughs) Thank you. I it's that is a big question that I have in terms of like every time I'm like, how, how is it that And you know, I don't know if you've ever had questions like this, like how is this something that is so deeply resonant with me can connect with people who I may never have, I may not even have anything in common with, you know, outside of us being humans, like, you know, just in terms of our day to day life, like, wow, that person's very different from me and they still connect with this. So I've actually, that's, that's actually kind of like a big question that I don't feel like I have the answer to, but it's a question that I I feel like I spend a lot of time with because I think that there's something to that. Um, amongst like, I'm really interested in human connection and like what connects people with each other. So that's something I think about a lot when I'm sharing things. And and I spend a lot of time as much as I can, you know, reading comments and engaging with people because I'm very curious about like, what is what are these like unspoken or maybe not so obvious things that connect us that that are really rich and deep and and go beyond you know, even physical distance, because, you yeah. know, the work we do is a lot we're connecting with people who are not seeing face to face all the time. So, yeah, I don't have an answer yeah. for it, but <laughs> I spend a lot of no, time thinking about it. <laughs> I completely understand. I mean, I clearly share quotes too. yours are your own words. Mine are very often usually other people's words. And it's so interesting to me how even quotes where I'm like, mm, this might only apply to me, but I'm going to mm-hmm. share it anyways because I like it. Then someone mm-hmm. will message me and be like, I really need to hear that. That is like exactly mm-hmm. how I'm feeling right now. Wow. Yeah. And I always just think that's like the power of the written word and the power of being able to share the human experience mm-hmm. through writing is just that you realize like we're really not that different. We yeah. all go through the same things. Mm-hmm in very different ways, but like yeah. those emotions that we feel are similar. And yeah. that's what like unites us as human beings. And we forget that sometimes. Yes, yes. And it's very, yeah, I feel like especially on, on online, it's very hard to hard to remember that because like one thing I've been thinking about a lot, like probably too much, <laughs> is that I think about like paper and 
So I'm in school right now, so I, I should probably give that clarification. If anyone's like, why is she talking? Okay, why is she talking about paper? Okay, like it's, <laughs> I promise, like I'm not gonna give you the whole thing. I will. I just been on your short, mind though. Paper. Very, yeah, very very short version of it. But I've been thinking about how even when it comes to because we talk a lot about oh social media, internet, internet. It's like actually you gotta go a little bit further back because paper. We were not always like even sharing on paper. Like it used to be yeah. like carving like in physical space like in a cave or something so it's like as time has gone on all the way down to a screen like so much so many of the places that we share every day even if you're just texting a friend even if you don't have social media are like these kind of flattened spaces and i just think about like we're these multi-dimensional beings and we communicate all the time and like these kind of flat you know on paper on a on a rectangle screen so i just think about that a lot it's like wow yeah maybe that maybe that contributes to why you know maybe it's a part of the reason why like it can be hard to to feel like you're seeing something what someone says and again whether it's a text message or whether it's on social media and like i'm just not getting that connection so i think that that's where words play a role i think words can kind of push through that kind of flattened space and like add dimension to it again so that's so beautiful absolutely think think about that a lot (laughs) yeah that's a beautiful deep thought of course i (laughs) i'm sure your mind is just filled with them i would just be like oh it's a piece of paper but (laughs) you made it into something poetic as always I, thank um, you thank you uh, the, the people who see me every day pro- like my sister my husband they probably would say otherwise They're like oh here she goes uh, again talking about well, the paper <laughs> it's like where you can't just the- write it down and move on <laughs> like no i can't <laughs> well for those of us who don't have the pleasure of hearing your thoughts all the time it's it's wonderful so thanks for sharing oh that's so kind thank you uh, <laughs> i um i want to go back to I know I listened to some podcasts of yours and tried to like get down to your story and Mm -hmm. you kind of started your internet presence off of a poem that you shared that Mm -hmm. went crazy on Pinterest. Can you tell us a little bit about that and talk about kind of like this growth that you experienced and how your brand has transformed, how you've grown in your business? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So I, you know, like many people my age, in my age range, I'm 33, you know, I, I became, as I was coming and becoming an adult, you know, these social media platforms were there. And also like many people my age, I was really struggling with career and job and trying to find just financial stability. And that was, that became a huge theme in terms of like, even creative decisions I was making, because I was like, I don't have like a bunch of skills. Like I don't have this resume that makes somebody just want to hire me. So I have to work for myself pretty much. And that was very stressful. So I ended up just, I mean, and and I just think as a society, like we have to talk more about like the, the stresses of financial hardship can cause on a person health, you know, mental health, physical, health, everything. That was me. And I was just really, really struggling to keep up. And I, and ended up feeling like I was letting people down and it just spiraled into like all these other things, you know, and I wrote a poem about it and just about those struggles and about that, that anxiety and fear, very real, you know, pay rent next month type, you know, in a, in a few weeks kind of thing of just like, I am, I'm just feeling so, so stuck, lost, all those things. Wrote a poem about it. And for some reason, I decided to just take a picture of it and post it on Pinterest. And that was in late 2016. And then in early January 17, it started showing up on Instagram. And people that knew me started like DMing me. They're like, there's like a poem. I found like this poem with your name on it. Like, did you write that? Because I wasn't like sharing poetry. Like, I've always written poetry, but it wasn't like anything I was just sharing like a lot of. So I was like, yeah, I did. I don't know how people are finding it. So I went back and looked at Pinterest and it had been repinned over a hundred thousand times. And oh my gosh. that was just, that was just like, Oh, okay. Well, at least I'm not alone in that feeling. Like at that point I still didn't have answers for what I was struggling with, but I was like, well, I'm not the only person. And what ended up kind of becoming a big catalyst moment for me, because at first it was just like, I don't know what to make of this. You know, I'm like, well, what do I do? Like, it was just a one time thing. Yeah. Like, I don't. I don't know what to do with that. And the thing that really kind of took me out of that was I started to get a lot of DMs from 
I was I was like 26, 27 at the time. And I started to get like a lot of DMs from like 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds. who were just like, thanks for sharing that. Like, I'm going through a really hard time right now. And like they were the things that they had been through were things that I had never even been through. And that was like a deeply humbling experience because I was like, I wrote this about what I was going through. And now people are DMing me about things that I, I just, just uh, my, my heart was just like crushed just reading their stories. And it became, I was like, you know what? I'm going to write for them. I'm like, I don't, I don't have the answers for what they're saying. You know, I, um, but I can at least make something to let them know that they're not alone and that they're not. And I, cause I start to notice this and this, this still happens. Like sometimes this is what keeps me going and continue to write and share is I'll sometimes get people in their messages saying like, I don't mean to bother you. Or I'm probably talking too much. And as somebody who has felt so much in my life that I'm that person, I'm that person who's talking too much. I'm that person who's giving too much. I'm the, I'm like, I got to back up. Like I, as the person who leaves social interactions, like you talk way too much. You said, da, 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 da. and I'll spend like a whole hour or two or three or four <laughs> overthinking everything. And then it shows up in my mind, like a year later, I'm like, why did I say that? They didn't need all that information. Um, anyway, as somebody who spends a lot of my life doing that, like that feel like when other people say that, that's like, oh, oh, no, no, no. That's OK. Like, bring it all. Like, I, I I'm I'm that person, too. If nothing else, I want to make things that that help people feel like that. That's OK. Like we're all even if we don't have it, we are all worthy and deserving of places where we can just express and let out like without that judgment, that that judgment of like, I'm being too much. I'm being too much. I'm being too much. So. Yeah, that that kind of became like the motivating thing of like, well, I'll try to write another poem because I really did not know where to go from there. I was like, I don't know how to do that again. Yeah. And slowly but surely, I just started writing different versions of what I had already said. And slowly but surely, it became uh, it became a practice. And it was really and, and I added started adding like little doodles in there. And then I started adding like digital doodles. Like if you go back on my feed, like you'll see, like it was, it started out with white background and like ink pen, um, ink pen, like, li yeah, just like little ink pen sketches. Like it was very simple. And as time went on, I started adding more color and, and yeah, so it, it became something that was meeting me and my own stress and time of anxiety and, and, um, it it and it also became a way to be present to others and what they were going through and and when i look back at look back at it i'm like it looks like i planned the progression <laughs> but i did not <laughs> um it was just a lot of little things at a time like if 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 you look at my work you'll see like a lot of them are very short a lot of them are standalone pieces and together it looks like something, <laughs> but really it was just that one by one, just really thinking and reflecting and spending time with people's stories as they were sharing them with me. And, and as a, and as a result of that, and I was also just being present to my own story and my own growth at the same time. So yeah, that was, um, a lot of those little pieces that I've shared, that was how all the partnerships came that was how, um, I mean, it didn't, doesn't matter who I've collaborated with almost every single time. It's just a screenshot from my Instagram or Pinterest or my website. One little thing I've shared and they're like, would you like to be a part of, you know, making a piece for National Poetry Day or what, you know, whatever it is. And slowly but surely, that's where that component came in. And not shocked me because if you if you had told me, OK, make something put on your feed that like some company might reach out to you and want to collaborate with, I would not have I wouldn't have put a poem up, you know, like <laughs> that's not I'm like, I don't know. I guess I got to buy some cute outfits or something like I don't know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that that's kind of how that part came along. And then and then we um, I uh Let's see, in, in 2019, that was when I kind of got in a rhythm of that and I had started to to post more. And then um, me and, and my husband, uh, I, was, I was pregnant with with my son and he my husband was working in construction. And 
his boss was just like, yeah, I don't have work for you. Sorry. Um, and we were like, okay, here we go again. Uh, try to figure things out. And that's, that was why we started my online shop. And that was the biggest surprise because I, you know, I didn't really think that what I was doing would be something that people want to like buy on a print that it, that just didn't seem because in my mind, I'm like, prints are like real art, you know? Like, I didn't feel like my work was like real art. I feel that so much, yeah. And I was like, why would they really do so prints? I'm like, what, a print of what? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, They're like, I'm so, not like Picasso. Yeah, so it was my, my husband's idea, actually. He was like, let's just do 8 by 10s And I mean, he doesn't have like an art background. He was just like going off of frames that he saw in the store he was like let's do it. i was like uh, are you sure <laughs> like who wants an eight by ten i'm like this is oh i could not wrap my mind around it <laughs> I, I was very wrong apparently you know there's a lot of amazing shout out to everyone who bought an eight by ten in those early days like i literally <laughs> just it was so mind-blowing to me i remember we just we found this company online we printed like a hundred of them and I put them like in a frame I got from the store and I sat it up on like the table in our apartment. And I'm like, here's the print. <laughs> Does anybody want to print? Let's see what happens. And I was very wrong. And it was from those prints. And um, then I added stickers. Those were kind of the main two things, prints and stickers. And that was where like it, it, it became a business, you know, it was yeah. like, it went from like the collaborations were like, okay, that's kind of cool. Maybe there's something there, but it was the online shop. And then, um, around that time too, someone had reached out about an app and they were like, we make apps. Would you like to make an app? And I was like, never done that, but I'll give it a try. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a lot of different versions of that, but those are kind of the big points. Those are kind of the big points of like, I'll give it a try. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And now that I, now I can look back and see like all those pieces, you know, they, they help to, to create something and, and when I say something, I, I don't know, I like to use a lot of imagery, but to me, it just feels like building blocks of a house, you know, it's like when, if you're, if you're, I have never built a house myself, but I do know that like, if you're building a house, like there's different tools that you need, there's different processes and different blocks of the process that you need. And that's kind of how I see it. It's like every, every thing I start, everything I do, it's all a part of this like larger thing that's still being built. And, and yeah, it's okay to just keep going piece by piece. So. I love that you shared that story because I feel like so many people sometimes are under the illusion that people just become overnight successes. And in mm -hmm. one way you did, like in one way that post that you had blew up, but then in a million other ways, it was these tiny steps that led you to where you are today. Like you could have yes. just done nothing with that post blowing up. Mm -hmm. You could mm -hmm. have just let it simmer and move along. but. To really get to where you want to be, it's just these tiny steps and tiny efforts and honestly, like taking leaps of faith over and over again and trusting that those eight by 10 prints might sell or yeah. that that collaboration <laughs> might do well. And so I really appreciate you sharing that and letting Thank us you. get some insight into that journey because I think Thank that helps you. a lot of people. I w would love to hear your answer to the question of the show. I'm so anxious to know, but what's the best advice you've ever gotten? Yes, from my therapist. Oh, that's <laughs> always a good me, one. Who told me, you, Morgan, you've got to start living life on your own terms. And you're only, you only need to do things that are on your own terms. And just a little background story is that this therapist was a, a specialist. And it was right after I received my autism, ADHD, and sensory processing disorder diagnosis. So I'm all those things. I'm autistic. <laughs> I have ADHD and sensory processing disorder. And it was a moment of big kind of like reckoning in my life because I had realized that I had spent a lot of my life trying so hard just to survive. Um, I think that there's not enough and I say not enough, just like I know people are talking about it, but I do see, especially with my generation, a lot of people talking about like, oh, millennials, they're all just trying to start stuff and do stuff. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like there's a lot of people who are, all, but I'm like, there's a lot of people who are trying to survive. And I'm like, it's something that you don't always see. 
in the Instagram post when you see your friend creating that, that third or fourth Instagram account to try to start their thing. I'm like, there's a lot of us in there. We're just trying to survive, <laughs> like just trying to have some kind of like something in the world where I have some agency. And I was one of those people. So I would say yes to so many things like that would just <laughs> take months or years of my time at different points in my life, just because I'm like, I just don't feel like I have anything. Like, I feel like I'm just not good as other people are. It's so many things, even everything from just friendship to having a pet. <laughs> I, I was like, I feel like my friends are better pet parents than me. Like, I'm a horrible plants parent. Like, you know, I'm just like every, I'm like every category. I'm like, Oh my goodness. What, what can I actually do <laughs> that? I, that I feel confident enough that like this, that, that I belong here just as much as everyone else. So I spent a lot of years really struggling and my, in a lot of different ways. And, you know, of course, neurodivergence and being autistic, obviously that, that informed a lot of that, but it was my therapist who said, Morgan, are you, are you doing it on your own terms? That was a good, that was a good bridge for me when it was hard to start saying no, when it was hard to start saying, no, I can't do every, you know, thing that someone calls me and asks me to do, or I can't, you know, sign up for everything that I feel like I should be doing on your own terms. That was like a good, good bridge for me into this world of like, yes, you have felt like you weren't enough in all these little ways, but there's also a lot of little ways in which you can find out that you are enough and you have agency and saying yes and no when you need to. So yeah, I think that was the best, best advice. So beautiful. That's so beautiful. I, I also had a great therapist one time who told me that like I needed to get rid of all the shoulds in my life. And I Mm -hmm. feel like as you were saying that, that's Mm -hmm. something that I was thinking about was we always say I should be doing this I should be Mm -hmm. feeling this way I should be acting this way Mm -hmm. and it's those shoulds that put all these expectations in our lives that shouldn't shouldn't be there Mm -hmm. you know and especially with people with limitations that are beyond our control for me that's been like chronic pain and I always look at other people I'm like well things that are so easy for them aren't easy for me and I want them Mm -hmm. to be easy for me Mm-hmm. And I think that can just be detrimental to our lives mm-hmm. in so many ways. Yeah, that's so true. From, I mean, from relationships to friendships to career to like physical, physical health, mental health. Like, yeah, there are so many categories where that can happen in our life. And it all starts to, you know, it, it can really make you feel like, wow, I'm just not where I need to be. So yeah, we need that, that advice (laughs) and in whatever form it comes to remind us like, no, it's okay. It's like, yes, you may still, you may still think about it, but there are also these other things that we can hold on to that can remind us that, you know, we're, we're okay as ourselves (laughs) and not trying to be like anyone else. So yeah. Yeah. What have you felt since using that advice more in your life since being so vocal about your diagnosis, which has been incredible. And you've been even just when we think you can't get even more inspiring, you do. And (laughs) it's been really just helpful in so many ways to so many people. What have you felt since having that liberation per se? Oh, it has changed my life so much because I started to realize that even certain dreams that I had, were wrapped up in who I thought I was supposed to be. And one just very concrete example I could give is that, I mean, and it wasn't, it wasn't even, it wasn't even that big of a thing, but it ended up like spiraling into some other bigger things. It was that of having an in-person art studio. So I felt like, Oh, I want to have that. Of course. Why wouldn't I, if I'm going to be an artist selling prints, I'm going to need to have a studio. And I spent a lot of years trying to make that work. Um, and, and the pandemic halted it more than once. And (laughs) it was very, very difficult. Um, just uh, financially, logistically, all the things like it was just (laughs) not coming together. And, I got to a point where I realized I was like, do I even want this? Or do I feel like I'm supposed to want it? 
do I feel like yeah. d- is this something I actually want to do and something I need to do or is this something that I'm following stories of what's out there in the world already not realizing that this story that I'm in is still being written and it doesn't have to follow the same plot points of even other successful stories of people that I look up to. And it's like, I can fully appreciate their trajectory and their successes and all those things while recognizing that, yeah, mine's is not going to look that way. So that became the first one. It was that, that art studio. I was like, okay. And, and I moved my entire, everything I do to at home. And I spend a lot of time at home and it is different than what I thought I was going to be doing. But ultimately for, for my health, it's very good for me in that way, especially just being neurodivergent and the particular way that things that I deal with, with sensory processing, sensory processing disorder, it really helps being at home and even just being able to control the lights of the room I'm in. Um, I'm able to, do a lot with that and it really helps me so I was like okay I'm seeing that big shift just from that you know one thing how else can I do that and I realized another one was going back to school I had spent so many years feeling like I was just not smart enough um I really struggled like when I was an undergrad and i failed some classes and like just barely made it by I was like looking at my transcript the other day I didn't even remember I got in a C in voice and I was like what was I like how did I but I did it (laughs) I didn't know back then I had a learning disability and and I had no clue so I was like oh that's why I felt like so horrible in school and when I graduated I didn't even want to think back on my degree because I was looking at my transcript I'm like C's F's like I was really struggling and I kind of internalized well I'm just not smart like I I can't you know clearly school was not for me and I ended up finding a school that was for me and I'm able to go online and that actually makes a big difference for me just being able to go online I didn't know back then that I had a sensory processing disorder and sitting under sitting under fluorescent lights all day impacted my ability to fill out a scantron and take a test I didn't know all those things back then Mm. but now I know and all that stemmed from me realizing well maybe there is a way of doing it on my own terms maybe there is a way of because I love school. So maybe there is a way of being in school in a way that makes sense for me. So now I'm in a program that does make sense for me. And before I register for a class now, I ask tons of questions about it and I prepare and I have to do tons and tons of prep work, but it's something that I enjoy spending my time with. And I don't think I ever would have found that had I not heard like, no, you're allowed to like kind of look at things and modify it and say like, okay, this is something I want to do, but how can I do it in a way that's in, aligned with my actual capacities in the actual way that I am and not the way that I feel like I'm supposed to be? So I've been taking that into so many different areas of my life now. So, yeah. That's amazing. It's incredible how those things that we think are like our limitations, actually, when we accept them and we understand them, become the very thing that makes us free. It becomes the very thing Mm -hmm. that allows us to succeed at things because we understand, oh, like maybe we are going to succeed doing it a different way than everyone does it or or Mm -hmm. feeling it a different way than everyone feels it. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's a wonderful story and so inspiring to just accept who you are, accept the unique abilities that you have and how your unique path is to achieving certain things. Yes, I really exactly. love that. Thank you. I would love to know as like a quote queen, a poet queen, what your favorite quote is. Yes, it is. I have, I have a lot of favorites, but this one probably just comes up the most. So okay. I'm, I am, I am qualifying what favorite is just based on the fact that like, no, I got to look at this one like all the time. (laughs) And it's uh, one of my favorite poets, uh, Rainer Maria Roca. And a part of it is, and the point is to live everything, live the questions now. Perhaps you will then gradually without noticing it, 
live along some distant day into the answer. And I have to say to myself all the time, live the questions. It's like, live them. Like the art I make, the, the task I do each day, just, you know, as a parent, all of that is living within questions. Like (laughs) there is not a point where the questions are all gone, but I'm allowed to live within them and make art within them, be present within them. So yeah, I would say that's, I would say that 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 one's probably the favorite. (laughs) That is so beautiful. And it's so funny because when I was preparing for our conversation, I was like, you know, the the thing that stands out the most to me about your work is always how good you are at capturing this feeling of uncertainty that we all mm-hmm. live in. Yeah. And like the older I've gotten, and I'm sure throughout your life as well, clearly you realize that that uncertainty doesn't go away. Like you always think yeah. like, oh, at this point in my life, the questions will be over once mm-hmm. I have the house and the kids and mm-hmm. the wonderful marriage and whatever your goals are. Mm-hmm. They might look different than that, but whatever they are, you think, well, then the questions will be over and life will be safe and everything yeah. will be answered. And I think the older you get, you realize that the questions just keep coming and they're they different. They do. And yes. they just keep And even when you try to ignore them, other people find ways to ask you questions. <laughs> what are you going to do this? What are you going to do that? It's like, I, I need a break from that, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they just, they follow you along. Yeah. And as mm-hmm. soon as you think like, I'm going to get to this point in my life where I am comfortable and mm-hmm. I don't have to go out of my comfort zone ever, you realize that life hits you with something you never expected mm-hmm. and there the uncertainty is again. Mm -hmm. And so I would just love to know you're so wonderful at helping people feel peace. And that's what I felt so many times through your words is feeling that peace and that uncertainty. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone who really is feeling just crippled by that uncertainty and afraid that like, what do I do if it lasts forever? Mm -hmm. Yes. I would say my advice that I would give is to know that you're not too much for asking all those questions. You're not too much for feeling all that. You're not too much for, for wanting to, if you want to do something, you know, about it in some big way or in some small way or in some way that you don't feel like other people are really noticing about you. You're not too much for all of that. And that you are worthy of space to be able to, to be a version of yourself that can exhale and can, and can, work through these questions and live out these questions, live through these questions, even without the answers. So that's the first part of the advice (laughs) is just taking that pressure off and taking that judgment away of like, you know, even if other, even if everybody doesn't get it, doesn't take away from the fact that you're worthy of it. And the second part is to keep being curious even if it's passively curious i think that we're curious sometimes like has like this whole like magnifying glass like oh gotta go be curious like no you just just like notice you know just like notice different things that that speak to you and and allow yourself to go deeper into those things because hidden within them might be some form of expression uh whether it's in your relationships or whether you're an artist or a writer And that could be anything from like, there's some people who make really great music playlists. I don't, my music playlists are organized chronologically. Like, I'm just like, it's October. What am I listening to? Okay. (laughs) And I'll just put it in there. And then there's people like my sister who like, no, like, I mean, she's got playlists for certain drives that she does for certain moods on that drive. And People who have that kind of sensibility, like you're not just making a playlist. Like that is a emotional soundscape like that you're creating for yourself to enter into like sonically. That's not, um, that's, we use words like music playlists, but there's more to it. And like, you know, I even look at the work you do. Like that's not like that. Some people might think like, oh, it's, if I didn't write it, then no, like we need people who are creating bibliographies who are curators, who are editorial, like, that's a whole other, like, I don't feel like I have that skill. Like, (laughs) I'm just like, I don't know how to put this together. And, but yeah, I, I love it. And when I, when I see your work and when I see people who have those skills, I'm like, I'm so grateful that this person is offering forth this form of expression 
because we all benefit from that diversity. So, you know, I even for the smallest things, whether you like to bake bread or whether you like to try to take care of plants, whatever it is, like allow yourself to just be curious, be curious and and explore the depths within those things and and just know that there's room for you to do that for as long as you live and to just enter to that. enter things and be curious. I love that. I think if you have shown us anything, taught us anything through your words, and honestly, since the beginning of time, I think human beings have used that creativity, used that service, whether you like from our creativity to work through those questions and to work through that uncertainty. Yeah. And I think that's how we get through together is we use whatever unique talents we have and try and make it a little less scary for ourselves and those around us. And so thank you yes. for helping us do that. Thank you oh, for your thank work, you. And for your inspiration and for joining us on the show today. It's been so wonderful to have you. Thank you. Likewise, I, I really enjoyed being here and enjoyed this conversation. So thank you so much. You're incredible. And please, last thing is tell us where we can go to follow you, to follow along with your work. Your new book was just released in February of 2023. Tell us where we can find it, where we can listen to your podcast, everything. Yeah, so I am Morgan Harper Nichols pretty much everywhere. So whether you're on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, podcast, <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> I, I've, I've done something all those places. And I also just have, you know, good old website, MorganHarperNichols.com. And the other thing I would say is my app called Storyteller. So I guess that one's not my name. So yeah, <laughs> Storyteller is it's, the one thing. It's a different name. Yeah. <laughs> but everything else. Yeah, you can find all that stuff at MorganHarperNichols.com. So yeah. beautiful, beautiful, Morgan, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Everyone, thank you so much for listening to the show. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments, let us know what you thought of the episode, and we will see you next time on The Shift. Mm -hmm.